All right, all right, everybody out there. Ooh, boy, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Let's just marinate with my theme song just for a few seconds. It is a new season on City Town Talk, ladies and gentlemen. And for the maiden voyage, we have none other than Miss Phoenix Gibbs. Shut up. Let me turn this music down. Let me, look. I love that dog, I love that dog. Hey, look, before I get all excited because I'm hyped, this is our first show of our new season. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to my Facebook page and I wanna make sure that we have some people that's tuned in. Oh, we do, oh. we do, we do. And the road, let me turn the sound down because I know how I get people want to call on the phone. I got my baby case up on there, Dar and Donna New Swan, and we have Dar Spent as watching. Look, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, look, <laughs> you just can't hold me to anything because right now I'm pretty doggone excited and I may wind up being all over the place. But tonight's show is being brought to you by Allen's on First Pizza, located at 374 South First Avenue, Cumbersville, Pennsylvania. Hey, look, and it's not too late to make a phone call and a pickup and a delivery. Call 610-383-4077. I'm talking about Al's on First Pizza, home of the two-foot cheese steak. Sounds like a heart attack, but it's all good in the neighborhood. Donna Roland, it is so good to see you because, Donna, I got some questions for you after the show is over. Ladies and gentlemen, look, for the first show, and this, this is going to be great. It's going to be great for the dog lovers and everything, and we're gonna have Miss Phoenix Gibbs. But before I get into that, let me, let me just give a few shout outs and things of that nature, because this is an exciting, hey Nelson Ojeda, this is an exciting time in Coastville. Now we had the Coastville Red Raiders, they won the chess, I guess it's the chess mod championship again. I don't know how many times it's been on, but uh, how many they've won, but they, yeah, I mean, they just constantly win. So I just wanna say two thumbs up to Matt Ortega, who is, who is a great role model, mentor for the boys on that basketball team, man. It's really good, 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 good to see him. Now, wait a minute. Unless you've been sleeping under a rock. I don't know. Phoenix, have you been looking at Family Feud? You know, I have not. I've been too busy grooming people's dogs to hardly yeah. watch anything and then dealing with my own, too, as you see here. <laughs> okay, so look, all you dog lovers, stay on here because we have the – Dog Groomer Extraordinaire, none other than Phoenix Gibbs. And I just want to give a few more shout outs. The Roberts family, once again, for the third time, has won on Family Feud. They are the three-time champions. They'll be on again tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And they just won $20,000 again this evening. I'm telling you, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Roberts, the whole Roberts family, they're just fantastic. They're funny and they're smart. And they are winners. So look. I want y'all to just tune in tomorrow and root them on right from your own home. Root them on. Now look, I, I read I read Phoenix's uh, uh uh I read Phoenix's bio, and it's so interesting. And before I didn't want to just read it because then the show would be over. So I just want to ask her some questions. First of all, Phoenix, why don't you say hi to all the viewers out there? Hey everybody, how are y'all doing? Hey look and look. Any of my viewers out there, I really need you to hit the share button because we just might say some stuff that makes some sense. I'm not sure. Phoenix, <laughs> great smile, great glasses. I love the dog. You know, I've been trolling your page and all that stuff. So let, the first thing I want, I always like the people to know before I want them to know what they do. I like them to know a little about who you are. So now, where are you originally from? Well, I was born and raised in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. I was actually born in the Coatesville Hospital. Now I believe it's the Harrison House, unless it's changed since it was called the Harrison House. But yeah, I was born here that is, and raised my entire life. That is so cool. Lativa, Lativa, it is good. Lativa Tao says you are awesome. Oh, thank you. I appreciate oh, She <laughs> said she appreciate that, but you can hear it because she said it out loud. Hey, look, okay, so now you're originally from Coatesville. Now, so that means you went to cash school, I guess, right? Absolutely, graduated in 1994. 1990, class of 94. Okay, let's think back to the class of 94. When you okay. was graduating, uh, <laughs> what'd you say? I said, those were good times. Okay, good, good, good. So let's, let's think about your thought processes back in 94. 
Did you have any idea this is where your life was going to be leading in regards to pet veterinarian grooming and stuff like that? Is that where your mind was at at that time? Actually, it was. I wanted to go to veterinary school, but veterinary school is extremely expensive and it really wasn't feasible for a single mother at the time to sign on those student loans. The price terrified my poor mother. <laughs> so, so I ended up doing a number of other things in between and I always still wanted to do something with animals because uh, I think I told you in my bio that my original love from a little girl was actually horses. And my mother and father did ride horses, but they never allowed me to do it. Mm -hmm. That's just quite unfortunate because I would have loved to have learned how to ride a horse, but now I'm too old to fall. So that's over. And we also lived in a townhouse and you can't have a horse in a townhouse. So I said no, the next right. best dog. So I bugged my parents for a dog, which wasn't too hard because they love dogs as well. And Pretty much when it came to things like music and dogs, if I asked for it, they gave it to me. They put up with my shenanigans. And as I grew to be an adult and figured out that I could not afford at that time to go to veterinary school. Mm -hmm. A few other things, but I always had something to do with animals. I've worked in animal control. I've worked for rescues. I've been a veterinary assistant, which is not the same as a veterinary tech, which you have to go to school and have a certification for. Mm -hmm. I eventually fell into the grooming because, you know, when I was younger, we had dogs that had longer fur that required grooming. They would send it off to the groomer or wherever they sent these dogs off to. And they would always shave the dog naked and send it home. And I would always think, why is my dog looking like this? <laughs> like, this looks tacky. They can, they must be able to do a better job than that. So one thing leads to another. I'm a mother with kids at this point in time. And I'm like, you know, I'm working in the nursing field at that time. I was a CNA and I was getting tired of doing things like that. I wanted to go back into working with animals. So I taught myself how to groom. I went online, I looked around to see who I could figure it out and knew what they was talking about. And that person that I ended up finding way back in, let's see, I think that was around 2010. She is now presently my mentor. And she is the number one groomer in the nation. So Ooh. that's pretty cool how that ended up working out. Wow. That is such a blessing. Such a blessing. Hey, let's take a pause for the cards. Karen Runner is checked in. Karen, it is good to see you this evening. Hey, Karen, hit the share button on your phone or device so you can share because your friends might not be my friends. And this young lady with this great smile, she is ready to share. And you know what the good thing is? I don't even have to ask her no questions, really, because she is letting this thing roll right off. And that makes for a great interview. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, I know you sure. like dogs and stuff, but do you have any other hobbies? Oh, yeah, I have a lot of hobbies. I like to draw. Okay. And I, I love music. Uh, anyone who knows me, and you've known me for a long time, so you probably know this as well that I do like to sing, but I'm more so known for rapping. I can also play a few different types of instruments. I can play the clarinet, the violin, and the piano. Now, wait a minute. Now, I was showing you, I see a bass guitar in your hand at, at some point in time on your page, or is that with somebody else? Nope, that's me. I dabble a little bit with the bass, too, but I'm not really proficient at that yet. Okay, but, but you are multi-talented. Yeah, you know, in some 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 circles, you would be called a prodigy. What? Hey, oh, Scarlett L. Gibbs, it is good to see you, Scarlett. Scarlett, hit the share button on here because we have a professional dog groomer, trainer, musician. I mean, we have a multi-talented, multi-purpose young lady right here. And it's good to see you. So now let's talk about family. Are you married? Do you have children? What's going on there? I am not married. I do have three children. I have a daughter and two sons, and I also have a grandbaby. I have Ooh. a little grand, just turned three years old. That's all right. That's all right. So, so, so you always liked and you always liked animals. But when you was when you was into the horses, were you into the dogs, or did it transition, or did your love for dogs transition for your love for horses? Um, my love for dog, my I got my love 
for dogs because I transitioned from horses. I loved horses from afar. I was never allowed, when my mother and father would go to the stable, I was allowed to pet the horses. Of course, only with supervision because I was a little girl and they were out riding and my mom was overprotective. You can't forget that part. Mm -hmm. So after after not being able to interact with them, I wanted something I could interact with more personally. And that's easier to do with a, you know, a little 25 pound dog from the SPCA, which is what my parents ended up getting me, than a 2000 pound horse who needs acreage and, you know, all of that stuff. I still but um i'm a little scared of them now they're big i'm small <clears throat> but about that you know that that's pretty amazing but you don't you don't find a whole lot of black people that's into riding horses so to have a have parents that's into that that had to take you out into a whole different realm of of thinking mindset and everything that is fantastic charles runner is watching hey charles it is good to see you charles hit the share button because your friends might not be our friends and we want them to know who we got on here today hey look and if y'all got some dogs type in your question to this young lady and she will answer it in real time now we're not talking about your boyfriend or your girlfriend that y'all call dogs we're talking about real dogs if you got some dogs look at this pretty dog look at these pretty dogs right here she, she tripped. Now, let me ask you, this white one, have you entered this one into a competition? Yes, I have. We did our first competition together in September. We did not win, but, you know, I didn't go out there to win. I went out there just to get the experience and, you know, let him get a little bit of experience. But the next time we step on the stage, we're coming for that trophy. So, so, so how... How was the experience? Was you intimidated, a little nervous? How'd that thing go? Well, I was a little bit nervous. I wasn't really intimidated. I did have an equipment malfunction when the competition Uh-oh. started. My blades decided at that time they did not want to work. Mm. So instead of using my electronic clippers, I had to scissor, which Uh-oh. is just using my long nine inch shears to scissor his pattern which is what we call, you know, the way that we contour the fur to the body. We call that a pattern. Mm-hmm. So I had that in which takes more time than using, of course, an electronic clipper. Wow. So it kind of threw me off a bit, but I did get his profile uh, set. I didn't make it as elegant as I wanted it to be, mm-hmm. yeah. but I was up there and I was up of the best of them. I should have been everyone was so welcoming there were people there who've been competing for years they go worldwide and compete they were very kind to me they helped me out so it was a very good experience you know get you know just it's nice experience to put my toes in the water but yeah we step out there in 2022 we're coming for it all right look look, look, now tina manson is watching tina uh, and Tina, if you have a pet, uh, not pet, I'm going to say a dog. If you got a dog and you got some questions, she's the one that you want to ask because you also have done some training and you know a little bit about behavioral with, 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 with dogs as well. Am I correct? Yes, I do. Uh, my friends call me the dog whisperer of the hood. <laughs> mm, come on now. And you know, I've been trained since I was a little, little girl in the same, maybe like, I think around six or seven. I love to go to the library with my father and I went into the nonfiction section and pulled out some dog training books and decided to test these techniques out on the little dog that my father got me from the SPCA in Westchester. And lo and behold, if I followed the directions, the dog listened to what it was that I had to say. So I continue to, you know, study that on my own. People got to see how well behaved well behaved my dogs were and asked me to help them out with their dogs so that's how i ended up falling into dog training all right ladies and gentlemen you heard her first she said they that she has been called the dog whisperer hey and you got a, you got your serious fan on here so i gotta read what she's got on here this is straight from scarlet l gibbs with hearts and all kind of stuff in there in her commentary she says yes mom's new son that is my first cousin and I love me some Nita who has loved dogs from a little girl. And Scarlett also says, I love me some of her. Yes. Yes, I love you too, cuz. Love you much. And you know your little cousin. Yes, you do. Oh, I've always 
Oh, Lord, I think I'm going to throw up or I'm going to start crying on here. There's a whole lot of love up on here. Hey, Luke, if you got any questions that you have for Phoenix about your dog, by all means, jump in. Not only share this, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, type in some questions so she can have some questions. So I ain't the only one. <coughs> excuse me. Mm, you got to forgive me. Okay, so now where we at? Where we at? Did you have or do you have a favorite dog, either past or present? Oh, that's a good one because they're all so unique. I've had a number of dogs and who would be my favorite? Would it be these two? Would it be, hmm. I don't know. That's a hard one. I think if I had to say, we in, in, the, in the dog world that I'm in, we have a term that we use for our favorite dog and we call that our heart dog. No matter how many dogs we end up coming across throughout the course of our lives, there's normally like one or two that really catches our heart. And if I had to pick one of my dogs, I would have to say it was my American Staffordshire Terrier that I got in 2004 named Bobby. And he was, a dog that I got started in the show ring with. You know you how you see the dog shows on TV. Well, mm -hmm. he and I on a few of those back in the early 2000s. He passed away at the age of 14. I really, really missed that boy. He was a very, very good dog. He was better behaved than these two yahoos that I have now. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going, yahoos? Wait, wait a minute, Charles Runner wants to know. He says, I own an eight-month-old red standard poodle looking for a good groomer. Are you the one? Yes, I am. Shoot me an inbox and we can talk. Charles, shoot Phoenix Gibbs an inbox and y'all can talk about dogs because that's this is what she do. I mean, this is just what she do. Okay, yeah. now let me ask you, do you mm -hmm. get do you get bit much? Not not too much, no, because being as I've gotten bitten by everything, I've been bit by mice, rats, birds, lizards, snakes. Come on, Zulu. You're just too nosy, boy. You know, when I was younger, because I was always touching something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you get tired of getting bit, your reflexes get pretty sharp. So it's pretty rare that I get bit now. With experience with these dogs, I get to learn what their subtle body movements are that lets me know what they're thinking and how they're feeling so I can avoid a lot of bites like that. Okay, okay. Sometimes it's morning, as subtle as their eyes just moving a certain way. Their body won't move, their tail won't wag, but their eyes will make a small movement and that's all the warning you're gonna get. Oh. So, well, that's all right. Elijah Chill is checking in and so is Norma. Asuncion. I love saying your last name. I have no idea if I'm saying it right, Norma, but I like saying it anyway. But look, if you have a dog, as you can tell, dogs love her. She loves dogs, and this is what she do. She's a groomer, trainer, extraordinaire, and she's now entering her dogs into competition. She just shared with us her maiden voyage. And just like, uh, let's see, just like that old saying about Murphy's Law, and what can go wrong will go wrong. I can imagine that was your first day at that. But look, you handled that. That means you would handle anything. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Some people would have melted, quit, cried, and just went and took their dog and went home. Not you. You stuck and stayed and made that thing happen. Mary McHale, it is good to see you. Mary McHale is always dancing every time I see her. That's, uh, that's Mary Kyle's little girl. So look, oh, a big woman, actually. So, all right, so now, when you groom for a customer and you groom for competition, what's the difference? What do you do? Well, the difference is normally when we're doing competition grooming, the coats are normally left longer than what the average pet owner wants to deal with. You know, come here, come here, Trey. Come here, baby. Hold on for a minute. Let me sort my animals out. Zulu, go over here, honey. Go over there. Funzie. Here, try. You're too fast. Just be still. You okay. see all. Excuse my dog. He's nappy. He needs to be bathed and brushed out. You okay. see all of this. This is about four inches of fur. 
-hmm. And when he's crushed and blown out, it looks really gorgeous, but it takes a lot to maintain, as you can see by his unkempt appearance here. Mm -hmm. uh, keep him looking as sharp as the pictures that I sent to you. He right. has to be washed and bathed thoroughly and dried and brushed out twice a week. And then I have, he, I'm letting his face grow in for a little bit, but since he is a poodle and the competition clip that I'm perfecting on him is called the German, I'm supposed to keep his face shaved and I'm supposed to do that twice a week. Wow. So it's work for a lot of the looks that we do do on the competition circuit that the average pet owner doesn't, doesn't have the time to maintain. Yeah. This is a lot of brushing, a lot of bathing, a lot of drying. And if you don't do it, your dog's going to get mad at and you're going to have to shave the coat off because yeah. dog, unlike humans, they grow between, I believe it's between six to 18 hairs per hair follicle. Humans only grow one. Therefore, you have to brush your long hair dogs more often and more thoroughly than we do our own hair. If we try to use our techniques on them, our dogs are going to get matted. Mats start next to the skin. They do not start at the edges of the fur. And that is one thing that everyone listening, if you have a long hair dog, Mats start next to the skin. So when you take your dog to the groomer and your dog comes back naked, it's because you did not comb and brush down to the skin. And the only way to get it off is to cut it off. And you only have about that much clearance to get between the skin and the fur. My blade has to go through that and peel it off the dog just like that. It is painful for the dog to allow, to allow that to happen. Grooming is not just for cosmetics. It's first and foremost a health issue because a dog, like if, if a dog was in the wild, they wouldn't have a coat like my poodle. They mm -hmm. also wouldn't have a short coat like my bulldog over there. They would have something more like a German shepherd coat, which doesn't necessarily match. But with my poodle's coat, if you want anything like that, if you have your Shih Tzus, your doodles, mm -hmm. it's like, if you don't brushy brushy, I have to shavey shavey. <laughs> you know, my head's about to explode with all this knowledge. I mean, I had no idea. Hey, Triple D has just checked in there, Davis. It is good to see this evening. It is a dog's world. We are talking about dogs. We are talking about grooming. And look, Venus Gibbs, she, she, she look, she knows what she's talking about. This, this ain't no joke. This, this ain't, look, this ain't no bootleg dog groomer. And look, I appreciate what you're sharing with us. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, now, now, what's his name? Zulu? Yahoo? What's his, other, what's his other dog name? Oh, his name is Zulu. Zulu. Now, you would never enter him into a competition, would you? Or would I probably, you? probably could. I could. I could enter him probably in abstract where they do coat carving, even though he's a short-haired dog. You know how they, how the barbers to put the designs in the young gentleman's hair? You can do yeah. the same thing with a short-haired dog. Look, if y'all got dogs out there, y'all inbox this young lady. At the end, we're going to find out if she wants to put out online how you can reach her. But look, now, wait a minute. Now, do you, uh, you, do, you, you do your dogs at your home? Uh, you do the customer dogs at home, or do you have a brick and mortar store? How does, how does that work? Well, what I am, I am a concierge groomer. That means I come to your home. I don't have a van or anything like that. I come within your home. And since we are in the pandemic, we can do all of the mandating and social distancing as necessary. Most of my clientele are elderly people. Eventually, I plan on getting a mobile trailer. Ah, yeah. I've seen a couple of them around. And they, they look like that, that. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Now, me, I want the trailer instead of the mobile van because I noticed I have friends that have mobile vans. And the thing with the mobile van is this, the mobile van has a repair that's needed. You're out of a day of work. If I have a trailer and my truck goes down, I just go rent a trailer and I can keep it pushing. Well, okay. All right. All right. And you, you already are starting. I mean, I, I hear that's what you do, but you're already taking positive steps towards getting this. Yes, I am. I'm okay. looking into purchasing a pickup truck in order to pull the trailer with, but you know, the truck that I want is really, really expensive, but I just need to calculate how many dogs I need to groom in order to get that truck. And I think early 22, I'll 
go right on back to the dealership and see what they got for me, see what I leave with. Okay, you dog owners, help her get this truck. Let's get these dogs, the Phoenix Gibbs. And we're going to talk about the name. Where did the name of your, your company come from? Well, Southpaw is for a left-hand person. And my youngest son is left-handed, so I named the business after him. Yeah, because I was wondering if you was left-handed and you was cutting like that. But it's all right. Uh, right. <laughs> all right. Hey, Iris, it's good to see you. Iris Holmes just checked in, and, and Iris has shared this video already. And, you know, I appreciate that. Nelson shared it. Hey, Donna Rowland, do me a favor and share this video. Hit the share button on your, your device so your friends can see what my friends are seeing as we talk to Phoenix Gibbs. Uh, wait a minute, Scarlett said, you're doing a wonderful presentation, cuz, with a lot of great information. You really, really are. Uh, you know <laughs> what I mean? Jeez. I mean, it's see, you know what? That's what this show is really about, is bringing people of interest that has talent, skills, ideas, and just bring it so other people in the community can see it because sometimes we walk past people we just don't know. Oh, I got, that's right. I got this saying that I had to hear from somebody because I'm not that smart enough for me to create this. But sometimes we, we walk all over diamonds looking for coconuts. Hmm, how about that? Yeah, think about that on your way home. I like that. So so as people have been passing you, they, they didn't realize that that you are a diamond, especially in the area of what it is that you do. So this is our way of introducing more diamonds from our community to people in our community. And that's what City Town talking about. Ain't nobody playing with nobody. I don't want nobody to be a secret, uh, be a secret to other people in the community. Well, the good stuff, bad stuff, we're gonna keep that secret. Let's see what Mary Kyle has to say. Mary said, all of us don't have dogs, but maybe the community will support by way of Cash App or GoFundMe to help her purchase the trailer. Mary Kyle's already advocating for you to try and get some money. She's right about ready to set up a GoFundMe Cash App. Mary Kyle, get off this. Uh, no, I'm only kidding. But hey, she's always thinking about other people, though, man. She's always coming up with stuff. But hey, that may be an idea. I, I've used it before to do some stuff. Okay, now let's see. Being a member of the National Dog Groomer Association, okay, you're part of that association. Tell me about that association. Who would be there? How does it benefit you? And you know, what does it what does it do for you? Well, since dog grooming is not, it is not a licensed profession. There are grooming schools, but they are not accredited. So if anybody's interested in becoming a groomer, keep that in mind when you're searching out your education in order to learn. The National Dog Groomers Association of America is sort of like, you you know how you have your board certified doctors? Yeah. It's kind of like the equivalent of that. A doctor, you know, he goes to school, he becomes a doctor, but when he wants to put that extra oomph on his practice, he goes and becomes board certified. Right. And after we learn what we learn, being as we're, if we're mentored by somebody, if we go to a grooming school, go through the pet smart grooming class or are self-taught like I am, our next level is joining one of these organizations, which to my knowledge, the biggest one is the National Dog Groomers Association of America. That's where we take our time and our money. We attend seminars. They hold seminars at different grooming shows all across the world. Mm -hmm. And that is where I'm working on becoming a master certified groomer. I have to groom uh, certain dogs of certain breeds within a certain amount of time to a certain standard. And once I complete all of those written tests and practical tests, that's when I can call myself a master groomer. Whoa. You sound like you're getting ready to be a beautician or something, you know, with all the theory and all that stuff that they be doing. You know, uh, I did go to cosmetology school, so it is rather comparative. And actually, since we're dealing with different types of animals, instead of kind of like the same cookie cutter human, it's a little more in depth. We have to do things like chemical safety, like the state boards for cosmetology. We have to do, you know, like dogs have parasites. We have to check into all of that, the things like ringworm health, identifying different skin conditions, it's very all encompassing how these different products will work on different types of coats. Yeah, it can, it's, it's, it's pretty deep. Wow. Now, how long, 
How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this 14 years. Wow. That is something else. That is crazy. That is that is really all right. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay. In the training of dogs, what, what do you find is, is, is mostly prevalent in most of the dogs that you train that you have to, to alter their behavior? I didn't want to use the word break, but to alter their behavior. What do you find is some of the most uh, uh, normal things that you have to deal with when you're training yeah. a dog? You have to be consistent. I can tell you everything to do. I can get your dog to listen to me, but ultimately the dog has to listen to the owner. So the, the owner has to put in the work. Dog training is more about training the person actually than the dog. Ah, oh, 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 oh. maybe that's why my Rottweiler was a failure because I sent him away to get trained. When he came back, he didn't like me. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Before he left, he wouldn't let nobody come. Uh -huh. <laughs> would a breed like a Rottweiler, in my humble opinion, I would not have sent him away, especially if he was a young adult because they're a guardian breed. And at that teenager -y time, mm -hmm. when they're actually funky and don't want to listen and act like they don't know who you are, mm -hmm. you really have to stay on them and you have to be present with them so that they learn to respect you and not that person that they're off with right 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 cases that would be an okay thing like for me even though i probably wouldn't send a dog off for a boarding train i could do it because if the dog came back acting funky with me i would know how to deal with it okay Your average oh, yeah. not, and that and that has a whole bunch of other layers and factors that's not a blanket statement it's just one of the things and many factors that you want to consider when you're looking for a training for your dogs man is y'all listening to what she's saying you know so you had to pay for some of this information in other places you're getting this stuff for me i'm telling you all right now with all that you've done what has been some of the biggest challenges hmm the biggest challenge is, is really, well, I guess for some people, the biggest challenge I think is customer service. A lot of people are really good with dealing with animals, but they're not so good at dealing with people. And also with this pandemic going on, I've noticed in you know, my clientele at the veterinary hospital that I also work at, I've noticed that our, uh, to put it nicely, respect levels are lowering. So you have to really, you have to really be a steady-minded, focused person and determined to keep your game face on because these people over their animals are going to come at you over the smallest little thing. And you can't tell them to take a hike. You just have to take it, mm -hmm. deal with it, smooth it out and keep it pushing and normally if you just hang in there with them they'll mm -hmm. come over and see it your way and it all and having a good customer service presence also helps you filter out what type of clientele you do want and this is for business over owners regardless of industry you you everybody is not your target market mm. yeah. you are serving the people who do not want what you're serving and you're going to deal with all <laughs> types deal with them will let you know who you can spend your energy on and who mm -hmm. you may not want to spend your energy on. Wow. I can, I can but you got to keep peaceful and you got to keep smiling because if you do that the good clientele they will love you forever good, good. and clientele they're going to leave you alone because they can't get you down and some people that really is their only desire to try to bring you down. But when you keep that game face on, it's a win-win. So, so now you have your regular clientele. Is your business growing or has it been stagnant because of, of COVID-19? How has it affected your business? Actually, COVID-19 has been very beneficial for my business. When the pandemic first started, uh, they shut all grooming down, of course, like they did most other industries, and we were not allowed to groom from until I believe it was May or June we were allowed to go back to work. Mm -hmm. And I also was doing door 
that time. And I would see the people as I'm delivering the food, see the dogs and whatnot in the conditions these dogs were in were terrible. When I got back to work, the horrible conditions that these poor matted dogs were in, because even though we say, you know, brush, brush, brush your dog, brush your dog, comb your dog, there are some people that cannot do it. Like say, if you have an injury or say you have arthritis or you're frail or you're ill, you can't brush your dog. So um, during, this pan during this pandemic, they couldn't get their dogs to the groomer and these dogs were in terrible, terrible shape. Some owners took it upon themselves to try to groom their dogs themselves. And that resulted in a lot of injuries. <laughs> I think I'm practicing on my dog. <laughs> Passing them clippers. <laughs> Oh man, that's messed oh, up. Now he can't go outside. Poor dog's ears were chopped up. I was like, oh my gosh. Well, now wait a minute. Your very first dog was, do you consider it a success? The very first dog that you did for somebody that paid you? Was that was that a good experience for that person? Or was you sharp enough from practicing that I, it was, came out good? Was, I was watching but her name was Quanette. She was my very first full grown client and mm -hmm. she had a little terrier mix. I can't remember his name. I think his name was Buddy. And Buddy, as I said, was a terrier mix. And if you know anything about the terrier group of dogs, they really don't put up with too much and they will fight you to the end about anything. They don't care. They're going, they're going all the way to the end with it. <laughs> and Buddy did not like grooming at all. So that was an experience in dealing with dogs being groomed that really do not want it. How do you get them to come around and put up with something that they obviously do not want to put up with and will fight you to the death about it? So that was an interesting experience and a really good learning experience, both from the training aspect and from the grooming aspect. That little dog something, but it's it it's it's the it's the ornery dogs that really teach you a lot. That is, I just like people. Yep. <laughs> just like people. You learn more from them than you do anybody else. Hey, look, Phoenix, I think I ran out of questions, but you know, I do have a uh I have maybe a couple things before we go. But I want to say I, I want to tell you that I appreciate you allowing me into your your home with your dogs and just allowing us to just hear what it is that you do and how you do it. It is, I mean, it's really, it is really, really fantastic. Now, how can a person get in touch with you that want to utilize your services? Well, everyone on Facebook, you guys can contact me directly. Just uh, inbox me on my page, Phoenix Gibbs, and I will get back to you. And then I will send you my contact information and we can talk on the phone and see what your dog needs. And you can contact me about anything that's regarding your dog in pet care. If you have a question, I probably have an answer. Just shoot it over to me. We'll see what we can come up with. Oh man, it don't get no better than that. Okay, so with that being said, do you have any last comments you would like to share with our viewers? It can be educational, informational, or inspirational. The, the floor is yours. Well, if you have a dog, and I'm going to talk about dogs specifically. If you have a dog, just know the first thing that it needs from you, it's not love, it's exercise. The second thing it needs is discipline. And the last thing it needs is love. Um, mm. when you do inspiration, if you put your mind to anything, you can accomplish anything. If you believe that you can, or you believe that you can't, either way that you're right, it's all what you believe. Um, and last but not least, Make sure you brush and comb your dogs out thoroughly. If you keep your dogs all nice and combed out, then I can make your dog look as beautiful as you like. But if that's too much for you, just be comfortable with it being sure. Why put yourself through it? You know what, Fizz, I appreciate that. Jeffrey Washington, you checked in. You all late, but Jeffrey, as you know, you can still come to my page and get this. Wendy Whitaker. Wendy, Wendy, you know what? And I should, I hope you look at this, Wendy, because. Phoenix knows dogs. Uh, she just did, she knows dogs. Charles said, thanks for sharing, Phoenix. Wendy Whitaker, because you got that little dog that you always be with, that you be walking miles and miles and miles. Jeffrey Washington, I know you had a birthday. I don't know if you got a dog. But anyway, happy belated birthday. I'm not even mad that you didn't invite me to the party. It's all good. 
Phoenix Gibbs, I want to thank you for uh, once again being on City Town Talk Show. I'm going. I'm going to save. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm going to save this and put it on our YouTube channel for those of you who may want to look at this again, or if you can troll up and down my page and see it. <clears throat> but if you go to Fonz New Sound City Town Talk channel on YouTube, you'll see this. There's just really nothing else for me to say. Hey, look, don't forget this month, I got some great guests. For those of you who are looking at Family Feud and you're looking at the Roberts family, they will be on my show on November the 16th. And we're going to have them talk about their journey uh, to get to Family Feud. Uh, I know a little bit about it from Dr. Roberts. It is funny. And uh, as you can tell, for those of you who have looked at the show, they are hilarious. Renee, Zanae, Bebe, I don't know. All of them, they are gems. And I'm just so glad that people from Coastville is really, really rising. You know what I mean? In our own strength, our own uh, own areas of expertise, man. God is good. Sharon Hart, my red hat, or Sharon, Sharon, you got to look at your show. Everybody's coming on late. Maybe something just went off TV or something. Hey, Sharon, it's good for you checking in. Scarlett Gibbs, really enjoy you. And Phoenix Gibbs, you know, you have brightened up a lot of people's lives. I don't know if she's a hidden treasure. Not to everybody, because it seems like y'all know her. But now she's more of a unhidden treasure for me. I want to thank you. Don't forget, tonight's show was brought to you by Allen's on First Pizza, home of the two foot cheese steak and beef pepperoni pizza. Ain't that something? So uh, Latifah said, thank you, Phoenix. Latifah, you hung in there the whole, you hung in there in the whole show, huh? But you know, I run my mouth. People just cut me right on off. Anyway, I want you to have a great night. God bless you. I want everybody to remember that Coatesville is rising. And if nobody told you that they love you today, Brother Fonz loves y'all. So I got to go because I got to go. Peace out. Thank you. Peace. Welcome. Bam.